Have you ever reminisced of the golden age, or perhaps monochrome age, of the original Game Boy and thought to yourself, Ugh, I miss that thing. I wish a random Seattle-based indie video game publisher would take a similar form factor, add a crank and color scheme that makes it look like a flattened Pikachu jack-in-the-box, and make it play a ton of exclusive indie games I've never heard of that mix the charming simplicity of old-school gaming with the lessons learned from modern game design. Well, my friend, on one hand, your brain is full of very specific fantasies, but on the other hand, do I have some news for you. Panic is a publisher known for helping bring to market the likes of Firewatch and Untitled Goose Game, and now Masterminds of the Playdate. And while my flattened jack-in-the-box metaphor might have sounded like a dig, let me assure you this is no such case, because the Playdate is the single most adorable little handheld console I've ever seen. Everything from the cheery yellow color, to the literally eye-opening animation when you unlock it, to the little fireworks that go off whenever you update the system makes its cuteness feel effortless, and the whole thing feel polished as can be. It's also probably half the size of your cell phone, and thus as truly portable as a handheld can get. While it only has two buttons, a d-pad, and a crank, which I'll get to in a bit, in my opinion the Playdate is less simplistic and more minimalistic. While the 400 by 240 pixel resolution screen and black and white display with no backlight might seem like a nod to the less desirable aspects of the Game Boy days, everything here feels intentional. There are some modern bells and whistles in the form of a gyroscope, Bluetooth and USB-C charging, but its lo-fi, low-power nature and limited control scheme feels less like a limitation and more a dare for developers to design a game that holds its own without fancy graphics or complex mechanics. I mentioned the crank, and it looks weird at first, and more like a gimmick than anything else. And in a sense it is, but it's also what sets the playdate apart. Most games are designed to be controlled with it in at least some minor way, but the ones that really utilize it can just feel so satisfying and tactile to play, delivering an experience that literally can exist on any other platform. So what about the games, you ask? Well, those of you who may be interested in pre-ordering the Playdate, and yes, I said pre-order because despite releasing in mid-2022, the supply still hasn't stabilized, you might want to know if it's worth the hefty $200 price tag and if the games on it are any good. So I was given a few dozen games in Playdate's catalog of purchasable titles to give a test drive, and next I'm going to get into a series of mini-reviews to tell you which of the ones I tried are worth giving a go. Note that I am not including any of the titles that come with the purchase of the Playdate, because as part of the purchase price, you get Season 1, which includes 20 four games, two per week automatically downloaded to your playdate, which run the gamut from super interesting and unique experiences to weak pointless distractions and everything in between. The catalog suffers the same inconsistency, with some games being way too overpriced, way too simple and derivative, or not even games at all, sometimes all three, and in its current state it's hard to sort through and see what's actually worth playing, but if you pick it up, let me show and tell you about some titles that are. Starting with A Balanced Brew, this is one of the playdate's earlier and more unique titles, a platformer where you play as a mustache Ashiod, unicycle riding hipster simply trying to get to his morning coffee. I personally imagine trying to balance myself across obstacles on a single wheel before my morning coffee is a recipe for some face plans, but this guy sure as hell takes it in stride. The game is a platformer where each stage has you using the crank and the crank alone to delicately balance yourself over steep hills, oil slicks, crowds of slow pedestrians, and sand traps on the way to your morning brew, but it's harder than it sounds. The crank essentially acts as the unicycle's wheel and must be carefully positioned to consider your momentum, the angle you're riding at and the son of a bitch obstacles people leave everywhere for some reason. A Balanced Brew has 80 levels taking place over 4 worlds and an extremely simple set of mechanics and controls, but the game nails its easy to pick up but hard to master format because every time I fell really was my fault and never a failing of the controls. With 5 difficulty levels and extra game modes, this one packs a lot of value for the $8 the developer is asking for and is a great early pick from the Playdate catalog. Next up is Bloom, one of the first premium games made available for Playdate and depending on your expectations is bound to be one of your favorites. The game stars Midori, a young girl who foregoes her college studies in favor of following her dream and opening a flower shop. Unlike most games, Bloom takes place in real time and is meant to be played in short spurts over the course of weeks. Plant flowers in your rooftop garden, shut the game off, and check in in a few hours or a day later to see them bloom and ready for sale. The daily cadence of Bloom is a great asset to it. It took me about three weeks of checking in several times a day to wrap up its story, and not being allowed to binge the game turned it into a relaxing part of my daily routine. That said, you do need to know what you're in for. Bloom isn't a management game at all, really. While you pick which flowers to grow and ultimately sell, the flower shop simulation piece is very shallow and closer in nature to the coffee brewing of coffee talk in the sense that it's there to add immersion and interaction to the game rather than any form of challenge. Much of the game will unfold in text conversations similar to a visual novel, with regular choices to be made that are always seemingly identical to one another, making the stakes feel pretty low. But the story and characters grew on me, even with the relationship between Midori and her 
girlfriend I being firmly on the cringy side of the young love spectrum at times. At $10, Bloom is one of the pricier Playdate games available, but backs it up with a good amount of content and a charming setting to periodically lose yourself in. While the gameplay elements are very light and there's not much to do once you're done, it's an experience well worth losing some time to. Now we move to a bicycle racing game in the form of Grand Tour Legends. Like a balanced brew, you control it using just the crank as your bicycle's wheels. There's no steering of any kind here. Rather, this is a simple but addictive arcade racer about managing your cyclist's stamina. There are three cyclists with differing mixes of speed and stamina attributes. Choose your racer, choose one of the three available tracks, and get ready to crank one out or something. The faster you crank means the faster you pedal, and vice versa. You'll want to crank fast to make the most of riding uphill, but usually not crank at all on the downhill slope where you can rely on momentum to keep you going. And you have to be careful, as you'll grind to a halt if you let your stamina run out. Cranking quickly when needed and letting your stamina regenerate when not is basically the whole game and not as simple as it sounds. It also has a great visual style, with each track managing to feel distinct despite the monochromatic palette. I had a lot of fun with this one. At $6 and with three racers and three tracks, I do wish there was more content, but frankly what's here is interesting and clever and one of the better titles I got to try out. Squish is a block-pushing puzzle game that's sort of like Yugo Puzzle meets Patrick's Parabox. You play as a squishy little blob that can merge into blocks the same color as they are, or realistically the same pattern. It's a small game that eases you into its mechanics with quick and easy early levels, but the further you go the more you're likely to have some thinking to do. It's all very clever, and I love the way you need to use the crank to rewind your moves if you make a bad one. At $5 for the 45 levels it includes, it's a decent enough value and definitely worth checking out if you're into puzzle games. Now onto a different kind of puzzle game. Shift is less of a level-based block pusher like Squish and more of a mix of Match 3 and Tetris. You play as a cute little droid named Sammy, whose job is to shift tiles around a 4x4 grid to match colors in a row or column. Once a match happens, the blocks you match disappear and new ones begin to appear on the board. To maneuver the blocks, all you can do is push or pull each row or column in a particular direction. While it doesn't feel especially intuitive at first, I got used to it quickly, and before long could spot opportunities for multiple step combos that I never would have figured out before. You also have to think carefully about your moves, as each one slowly drains an energy meter that ends the game if you run out, and only by making successful matches can you refill it. Shift will set you back 5 bucks, and while the value is a tad weak for a simple score chasing puzzler, I found it intuitive and easy to get sucked into in a way that plenty of playdate games aren't. If anything, I do wish the challenge would build a bit more, since I felt like I was still solving similar problems after 2000 points as I was after 200, but for those looking for a low stress puzzler that's easy to get sucked into, this definitely feels that niche for the playdate. If you've ever played Wordle and wished it would be significantly more difficult and stressful, Word Trip may very well be for you. Like the rest of the best of the Playdates catalog, it takes a simple concept and executes it in a way that sucks you in and makes you, or at least me, feel both smart and really dumb in equal measure. As the title so obviously implies, you're on a road trip making your way between different four-letter words, but you only have so much fuel between each one and need to figure out a way to make the trip as short as possible. When forming new words to get to your goal word, you can move the letters around as much as you want, but you must use three letters from the top word and only one from the bottom word. So, for example, Changing only one letter at a time, how do you get from the word word to the word trip, ensuring each word in between is valid? Well, you can go from word to drop, then drop to drip, then drip to trip, and done. You reach your destination and collect some points in the process. Sounds easy on paper, but can get fiendishly tricky, especially with the pressure of the fuel gauge running closer and closer to empty. While this is more of an arcade-style score-chasing puzzler at heart, multiple difficulties can add a lot of value for even the more advanced players. Normal definitely gave me a run for my money, and I was pretty decent at Wordle, so if word games are your thing, you'll definitely want to pick this one up.
I know an occasionally illustrated but overwhelmingly text-based game that plays like a black and white choose your own adventure book is not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but even with this considered, let me convince you that you're wrong and that the Barkless Doctrine is worth playing. In the Barkless Doctrine, you play as Val, a smart-ass piece of shit who I now consider to be my spirit animal. Val lives in New York City and one morning is semi-rudely awoken to Kitty, her twin aunt, which is a thing for some reason, and is whisked off to an adventure involving National Security Advisor Jen General Barkless, a bafflingly stupid limo driver named Stubby, and an elaborate good versus evil conflict manifesting itself as a choice between corn and flour tortillas at a taqueria. It's a dumb as hell premise that would feel like it's trying way too hard to be funny if the writing weren't consistently excellent in a way that earned plenty of laugh out loud chuckles from me. Also, the music is great. Just buy this one. <laughs> And last in this lineup of no particular order is yet another puzzle game, albeit one with a title weird enough to at least turn a couple of heads. Tapeworm Disco Puzzle is a game where you play as the cutest little tapeworm you've ever seen, who uses their limited movement ability to strategically collect music notes around each of the levels while avoiding enemies, helping fleas collect drops of blood, and occasionally guide a character to a goal lemming style. It's charming and well designed, has a ton of levels, and is actually the only game on this list that also has a Steam version, so those interested don't even need a play date to give it a go. And that about covers it for now. As you might expect from such a new device with limited availability, Playdate's catalog of purchasable titles can be pretty hit and miss, but every one of the games I've mentioned here is worth a go if you're willing to pony up the cash for it. While there may not be a ton of great content quite yet, I'm excited about the future of the Playdate. It's incredibly novel and creative in a way that falls very much in line with the spirit of I Dream of Indie Games, with hopefully much more to come. <laughs>